Hey guys, it's Layla from Ignite, and in today's video, I'm gonna give you my three key steps to producing your best thesis statement. Now, a lot of students write to us and they say, you know, I've got an excellent exemplar, but my feedback on my trials is that I'm not writing a thesis that directly addresses the question. So if that sounds familiar to you, stay tuned and I'm gonna give you my best advice to completely revolutionize the way that you write thesis statements. So, number one rule that I wanna kind of break down is no, you cannot memorize a thesis. And why can't you do that? Well, unless you get a question in the exam, which is the exact same question that you have used to write your exemplar, a memorized thesis is gonna be of zero use to you. Now, this is particularly the case with the change in the new syllabus. The markers are really looking to see that students have candidly and directly opened a dialogue with the specific wording of the question. So because of of that you can't have a memorized line of argument that's going to underpin the way that you use your pre-prepared exemplar to answer the question. That must be candid. And I just want to take a step back for a moment and ask myself or really ask you, you know, what is a thesis? Okay, a thesis is many things. It's your response to your question and the way that you formulate an argument which will enable you to answer that question. And number two, your thesis kind of foregrounds the progression of your essay and your body paragraphs in a way that justifies the progression of your essay. So, when you look at the question in the exam, you must ask yourself, okay, how am I going to use this essay question to work for me to justify where I'm gonna be taking the rest of this response? Presumably going into the exam, you're gonna have at the very least the evidence that you want to use, and that evidence is gonna be organized in the structures of your body paragraphs, which are kind of collated by the key values you want to convey, right? So as you're looking at the question, you ought to define those keywords in the question in a way that works for the direction of your essay. So you have to have in mind, okay, my paragraph one is based on this key value. Paragraph two explores this. So how am I going to devise a thesis which actually justifies the direction that this essay is going to be taking? That's why it's important to plan an essay which is very broad and able to be adapted. And in that thesis statement, you have to have foresight because if you provide an argument that you actually can't sustain throughout the body of your response, you'll get a comment, and you may have gotten this on your trial paper, excellent thesis, but you failed to justify it throughout the rest of your response. So keep all of that in mind, and I'm going to, I guess, elaborate on all of this in the next few slides. So a good thesis directly and explicitly engages with the question. Don't be implied. I've noticed looking at feedback on some of my students' papers that some of them get the comment, you know, you've implicitly linked to the question, which is fine in this part, but beware other markers may not have been as generous. So to be safe, be explicit use the wording of the question, come back to that wording throughout your response, but don't just chuck it in in a way that's tenuous. You have to critically engage with what the question is asking of you. All right, so before we get into the exam and before I kind of unpack an example question for you, you ought to remember that your timed essay, so your exemplar, mustn't be taking you more than 35 minutes. Okay, now I say this because as you'll see, when we look at a question and we unpack it, that takes time. And if you're busy in the exam regurgitating an essay that takes too long for you to write, you won't have time to stop and ask yourself, hang on, am I actually using the keywords of the question to answer the question? So make sure timing your exemplar it's written under good time conditions and you're able to reproduce it whilst giving yourself time to adapt within the exam. Okay, now onto my promised material, my three steps to success, if you will. Step number one, identify the keywords in the question. Step number two, define the keywords in the question in a way that works for the direction of your essay. And obviously that second step isn't gonna work if you've devised an exemplar that's too specific and not able to be adapted. So contained in that step is also the proviso that you must develop an exemplar which has kept in mind the requirements of that module and one which is able to be adapted for the types of questions you're gonna get. So in that process of drafting your exemplar, look at past paper questions, look at as many as you can, and make sure that what you've got is willing to be adapted. 
But nonetheless, define the keywords in the question, i.e. unpack them, and I'll show you how this happens. And number three, connect those keywords. Uh, for example, you have a module B question, which is asking you about uh, fragmentation and alienation in Elliot's poultry. In fact, we have a video on that exact question. Don't treat these two ideas in isolation. You have to tell me what about idea one produces idea two or contributes to that exploration. So you have to think about, okay, these keywords, they've been put together in the same question for a reason. How can I appreciate or reconcile these two keywords in the way that I frame my argument. Now, they're my steps. It's one thing to give you steps, another thing to apply it. So what I wanna do for the rest of the video is I'm giving you a human experience practice question. I've chosen human experience because it's applicable to everybody out there doing the HSE for standard and advanced English. But what I have done, the first few slides are without connection to a text. And then I use the specific example of 1984 to actually write the thesis statement because it has to link to the text given. So stay tuned, even if you're not studying 1984, the way that I work through these steps and I define the key words it's still useful for you and it's so important. If you can nail this, you'll be fine for whatever study you do for the HSE for any of the modules in writing your thesis statement. Okay, so here's my practice question. Human experience, practice question, board of studies release it, could be one that you actually get in the HSE. Through the telling and receiving of stories, we become more aware of ourselves and our shared human experiences. Explore this statement with close reference to your prescribed text. Okay, step number one, we've got to identify those keywords. Then we're going to unpack those keywords and define them through applying micro questions to the keyword. I have explained this in other videos, but just to kind of reiterate, what I mean by applying micro questions is thinking about words such as why, to what extent, how, what, what is the relevance in general of that keyword. And through doing that, you're starting to actually unpack what meanings are contained in that keyword in the question. Okay, so I'll apply this to the specific words of the question I've provided. But you wanna ask yourself, okay, if this is a module A question and it's asked about you know, textual conversation or it's asked about context, okay, what elements of context? Why does that context alter the key ideas that are being conveyed? And how can you link that to the broader relevance of this module? These are the kinds of questions you need to be asking and applying to the keywords in the question in order to flesh out a fuller kind of thesis. And then number three, connect the keywords, which we've touched on already. Okay, so highlighting the keywords, telling and receiving, okay? Aware of ourselves, shared human experiences. So starting to unpack here, looking at telling and receiving. Telling is referring to how Orwell presents these ideas, i.e. aspects of form or any composer. If you're looking at past the shallows, right? We know it's a novel. We're thinking about the characterization, the settings, the motifs in the text. How do they contribute to the way that we receive those stories? So really this is asking, how does the form embodied by the composer produce a certain impact on the person reading the text? If you're looking at Crucible, for example, it's a play. Plays are visceral texts. They affect audience members. Think about the authorial intrusion of Miller. Think about the setting. Think about the contextual allusion to the Salem Witch Trials and why he's particularly used that, all right? Ask yourself about the genre, the form of the text, and how that contributes to the way that human experience is told pursuant to the context of that particular composer. Aware of ourselves, okay, what in particular are we made more aware of? And this is where foresight of your ideas comes into play because the way you define what we're made aware of is gonna justify the direction of the rest of your essay. For example, if we're thinking about Miller's Crucible, what are we made aware of? Well, we're made aware of the importance of having integrity. We're aware of the extent to which we may be subject to extreme elements of control. We're aware of the kind of way that the motif of the name comes to identify individuals and their willingness to submit to power structures. So the way that you define what you're made aware of actually helps to foreground the connections that you'll build in your actual body paragraphs. So what are we made aware of? Why are we made aware of it? And link that to how the story is told because the particular mode of telling the composer is used allows that particular idea to be conveyed. Okay, and shared human experiences. What is shared about what we're made aware of? Are these collective experiences? And how does it actually continue to penetrate us as contemporary audiences? I.e., what is conveyed in 1984 in terms of the desire 
the shared human experience to have interpersonal connection, to have emotional connection. That's something we can still resonate with. The particular way that Orwell's text is told makes us more aware of our subjection to power controls, but nonetheless how intimacy or connection with others can alleviate that control. And we are able to relate that to contemporary contexts and therefore have some kind of reconciliation about how human experience, regardless of context, is kind of fundamental to existence. While these texts are produced in a particular time, their ideas resonate with us. And that's what this question is asking you to evoke in the way that you frame your thesis. So, using the specific example of Orwell, however, everything I've mentioned in terms of the, you know, Pass the Shallows, Crucible, 1984, there is still multiple links that you can make to what I'm about to say. Number one, the composer's form and genre represents the human experience in a certain type of way. That's how this particular text is telling human experience. Because of the way it's told, it raises an awareness. What does it raise an awareness of? I.e. there, you link to your body paragraphs. Does it make you more aware of subjection to control, the value of integrity, the value of desire to personal connection okay and then number three these raised questions lie at the heart of human experience and we're able to engage with them as audience members or as readers of the text so because of what we're made aware of it elucidates shared human experience because those ideas are likely to resonate with us and that's what this whole module is about it's about recognizing what makes us human and what lies at the heart of our human experiences Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to pause. I encourage you now to flick back over to the question, put on a timer, four minutes, have a crack at writing your thesis statement. Test yourself as if this were an exam situation and I guarantee doing this one question, imagine this comes up in your exam, you've already answered it. So have a crack and then I'm going to give you my exemplar in relation to 1984. Okay, so hopefully you've had a crack. I'm now going to give you my exemplar and we'll have a look at how I've tried to engage with the question. The highlighted parts are my explicit links to the wording of the question. I encourage you when you do your full-time responses in prep for the HSC to go through and highlight all your links to the question and to ask yourself, okay, how often and how legitimately and explicitly am I linking to the key words? Because that is the key to your success in the HSC. All right. Orwell's telling of human experience against the backdrop of totalitarianism in the post-war period is not contextually bound. Okay, so I've said this is what he's telling about human experience. He's talking about totalitarianism, elements of control, but then I've caveated by saying that it's not contextually bound, right? And I'm foregrounding shared human experience because what he explores isn't only contained or limited to his context. 1984 captures the fundamental shared human desire for agency and human connection. So I've said this is what he tells about human experience and in the rest of the thesis I'm going to justify how that's what we're made aware of and why it's shared in terms of our human existence. Receiving Orwell's retelling of his time allows an interpersonal reflection of how one's independence and paradoxical desire for connection defines our experience of our world. So implicitly here, through receiving his text, this is what we're made aware of. It enables an interpersonal reflection of these key ideas of totalitarianism and control. And what I've gone on to explain here in terms of connection and paradoxical desire, that's foregrounding what my paragraphs would be based on if I was writing this essay and how that lies at the heart of human experience, what we're made aware of through Orwell's text and how his genre and form enables his telling and dictates the way that we receive the text and appreciate this inevitable shared aspect of human existence. All right, guys, I hope that you found that useful. I hope you actually had a crack at writing your own practice thesis and I encourage you to look at as many questions as you can and go through those steps, right? Identify those keywords. Define those keywords with foresight and unpack them in light of the purpose of your module and understand where this direction of your essay is going and foreground that in the way you frame your thesis and connect those keywords. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Please do comment if you have questions, like and subscribe to the channel and I look forward to seeing you guys in our next video. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. If you do like the content, subscribe to our channel and we'll have more videos coming your way. That's right guys, thanks for watching and please make sure you check out our online resource database. We've had a team of state rank achievers and heads of English put these together for you, covering everything from essay structures and examples all the way through to craft of writing and comprehension skills. So check them out at ignitehse.com.au and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.